Coming up on tonight's broadcast, where have all the hard men gone? We salute the gutsy journalists who used to get stuck in for a story. Celebrity lookalike lunacy with Saddam, Jason Gunn and me. And Tony Marsh Madness as the TV Guide Awards go pear-shaped. John Campbell talks dirty and our cameraman is attacked by a mad woman's mag paparazzo. It's a shocking tabloid snapper shocker. All that and your letters too. Days, you don't often see Biff on the news or in current affairs shows. But back in the 1980s and 90s, it was all on for young and old. Which begs the question, have all the bad guys gone away, or are the new school just a bunch of pussies? Off before I start walloping you now. Piss off! Go on! Just yeah, leave me alone! Away. Sometimes cameras are the last things people want to see. And at times of stress, even millionaires have been known to lash out. When it came to putting himself in harm's way, Mike Valentine was in a league of his own. Get off the property! I'm getting off the property! Yeah, get off! I'm moving off, off the property! Oh. You two are oh, boot that red oh, We are we moving off. Go on. In this 1994 story, I mean, Valentine uncovered some dodgy carnies at the Easter show. Up your office. What I want you to do is get the camera away. Being a cameraman on his shift was a dangerous occupation, as Owen Goodwin found out. A couple of people were trying to stop me filming, then out of nowhere, some guy spun me around, grabbed me by the lapels, and butted me. Back in the heyday of the home show, Valentine was the bravest of all reporters, willing to put life and limb on the line in the noble quest for ratings. In this 1992 story, Mike took on Georgie, a glue-sniffing mother-to-be. John Tinsley wants to be reminded of his Riverview... Some people reckon that if they'd sent Genevieve Westcott into Iraq, there would have been no need for a war. Saddam would have left screaming. She was one of the most persistent tabloid terriers, with an accent as effective as pepper spray. Mr. Tinsley, I'm not being very rude. Why not? Why not? We'd like to hear your side. I'm sure you have. Here she is harassing an English caravan park operator accused of exploiting his clients. Her colleagues refer to her as the perfume steamroller. Interfering busy bodies like yourself. But, 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 Mr. Tinsley, is it not true about the Riverview? Is, is there? Is it not true about the Riverview? Mr. Tinsley, we have come asking a straight question. Though not a big man, Rod Vaughan was afraid of no one. Gold Court boss Ray Smith was so scared he hid in a tent. We don't really want to talk to anybody, thanks. I've been trying to come this way for the last week or so. While Bob Jones tried to give Rod a third eye. How many of today's journalists have ever had a mouthful of their own blood? Seems like there used to be a, a, a breed of terrier journalists. Um, yourself, uh, Valentine, uh, Genevieve Westcott. Um, where have these journalists gone? Well, because investigative journalism in television, in my view, is in decline, I mean, there just isn't the work, the work there now or the requirement for them. I mean, we're into. Um, I suppose, not to be too unkind, sort of tabloid current affairs, and, 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 and I, I don't say that disparagingly, because there is a place for that. But television current affairs today is driven really by revenue and ratings. It's disease of the week, crime of the week, pop star of the week. It's personalities. It's not issues anymore. If Bob Jones was your platinum hit, <laughs> um, was uh, Ray Smith your, your gold hit? Yeah, well, in some ways, the, the Ray Smith story to me uh, gave me more professional satisfaction than, than, than Bob Jones. Bob Jones was a, an accident, if you like. It was almost an aberration. Uh, but the Ray Smith investigation was the result of, of, a, of, a, of a long, detailed, in-depth 
inquiry. Ray Smith's was the classic 80s story. A flashy operator goes bust and investors go ballistic following the collapse of Gold Corp. Vaughan tracks Smith down in Utah, apparently living the high life. It's that moment where you had, where Ray Smith saw you coming, he's wearing those tight little shorts, <laughs> and you came down the hill very politely as well, Rod, I must say, yeah. and then he went into the tent. Sean. Yep. I'd really like these guys to go. Maybe you better leave. Well, can I just have one, one word with your father for a moment? Ray, I have done extensive interviews with a lot of investors from Gold Corp for making a lot of serious allegations about the company and about you. In the light of the Jones incident, I actually took along a couple of minders with me on that occasion. And uh, what you didn't see were well, off-camera were two, uh, two fairly solidly built Americans, one a former ice hockey player, who were, who were there giving me a little bit of moral support. And I think when the son saw them, he backed off and Ray put the zipper up. What was the outcome of that story? The outcome of that story was that, um, well, he was, he was arrested by the American uh, Immigration Service for uh, a visa violation. He'd, he'd gone there, uh, as I recall, on a, on a tourist visa and, in fact, had been working there as a helicopter pilot. Um, so they threw him out of the country and put on the next plane to New Zealand where he was arrested. And, as you may recall, he was charged with uh, various offences, I think, under the Insolvency Act and ended up doing a uh, short spell in prison. It was a brief encounter in which a visibly angry Smith told me he was being crucified for things he hadn't done in New Zealand. He said he hated New Zealanders, he hated their accent, he hated their country, and he had no intention of returning there. Tell us a little bit about the, uh, the Bob Jones incident, the now famous Bob Jones incident. Well, as you probably recall, that's, he was then the leader of the New Zealand Party, a party which had set up basically to, to get rid of Muldoon. Uh, he achieved that objective and then promptly disbanded the party. Just called a press conference in Wellington one day and said, that's it, that's the end of the party, I'm going fishing. This is Bob's house that we filmed uh, on the way to the Tronga River. Like colour steel on the top, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Big uh, property. Big property, yes, yeah, substantial property, and Bob was fishing. Here we are going up the Tongarero River at fairly low altitude in the helicopter. Uh, we spent about 10 or 15 minutes looking for him. <coughs> it's not a steady cam, is it? No, it didn't have a steady like cam. It's a cowboy, that pilot, actually. No, very, very experienced pilot. There's Bob in the, in the river fishing, and uh, some trout on the river bank alongside him. And now here he's going off into the bush to hide from us. And uh, he emerges from behind the tree, throws down the rod, goes for the cameraman knocks him over and then uh, punches me between the eyes, knocks me over, and a lot of swearing, you can see words foot going was on. That, before? that was probably the cameraman's foot. Right. I picked myself up eventually, um, and uh, with a broken nose, well, and uh, we here we are doing a piece to camera. The bags of the river here, and this is what we got for our troubles. So it was a left hook, obviously. It was a left hook, from it was in the like bridge this. of the nose between my eyes. And a tidy little vest you've got on there, too. Oh, well, it was, it was midwinter. It was July, you got to remember, Jeremy. It was a bit, bit cool down there. Mm. Um, and uh, Bob then loped off back to his hiding place in the bush. And uh, we like got a, home. Like a yeti, wasn't he, walking off there? Well, that's a pretty good description. You weren't exactly huge in those days, were you? You, oh. weren't, you weren't exactly mus you weren't huge, no, were you? No, no, I'm, in fact, uh, not even huge today. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Bob's quite a big man. He is, and he's a solid guy too. Mm. And he can punch. I mean, he's, he's got mm. some skills there as, as a boxer. And then the Rainbow Warrior came along. The next day, front and page. And that's the end of that Bob Jones. That was, we, were, we were taken off the front page. Mm. It's life. Mm. That's life. <laughs> yeah, it's a good TV program, that's life. Mm. I don't know if you saw the last episode. I didn't. Oh, it's groundbreaking stuff. Mm. <clears throat> Nominated for Best Biff. Off before I start walloping you now. Piss off! Go on! International fraudster Giovanni De Stefano took on Mike Valentine back in 1990. Now piss off! Go on! Hold on, hold on. Go on, just piss off! Get out of there! Go on! I'll tell you what, I'm gonna whack Do you want to see? Do you want to see this spot go rot on your nose and break your nose? I'll break your nose, I promise you. I'll break every bone in your body. Do you want to see how big you are? Do you want to take me off? Come on. No point in the job. Come on, man. You'll only get arrested. Still to come. Celebrity lookalike lunacy. 
Clint Brown, Neil Walker, Saddam Hussein, and we take you behind the scenes as the TV Guide Awards go all cockeyed. John Campbell talks dirty and cameras under attack as the paparazzi comes unstuck in a Jane Kylie melee. Now, listen, being a celebrity isn't easy, but possibly the worst thing that could ever happen to a famous face is to be mistaken for another famous face. In this exclusive investigation, we take you behind the looking glass to a world where fact and fiction meet each other but can't remember who is who or which is fucking which. Christ. Nothing brings on a mild chuckle more than celebrity lookalikes. Here the Herald is sticking it to Brian Edwards by using the same picture twice. Brian and Brian. This excellent example published in the New Weekly and Who recently is possibly the best of 2003. But who spotted this in a recent new idea? That's an old photo of me and some guy called Stephen, who looks a lot like me. Have you ever been mistaken for... Have you ever been mistaken for <laughs> Kia ora. Kia ora koutou katoa. Brown and Walker often get mixed up, and as legend has it, when Clint was being processed for boozy driving earlier this year, some onlookers yelled out, Hey, it's Neil Walker! I can tell without testing you. You're dribbling. While mix-ups are a pain in the ass for sports jocks, they come in handy for dictators. In fact, they can be lifesavers. Saddam is a very cunning man. He's had to be cunning in order to survive. Saddam was known to use lookalikes because he often double booked himself for speaking engagements. Have you ever been mistaken for Marcus Lush? No. Well, I, I could see how someone might. Very... He's been mistaken for you. Stop it. Is he okay with that? Would I be okay with that? I don't know. Oh, I can see it now. I can see it. Dark room, slightly, un slightly underlit even. Marcus Lush. What about Charchi from uh, <laughs> from um, Happy Days? And Joni loves Charchi, of course, the spin-off. Well, that was a spin-off. Why did they do that one? I don't know. Hmm. Not so much. I think perhaps I had the if I wore more of the muscle tees, he was big with them. But again, no, no, that would be good for me, but no. But stranger things have happened. This could be Donna Awateri's double on the American Hot or Not website. Seven point nine out of ten. Sonny Bono. Sonny Bono, well, that was sad, wasn't it? Height-wise, there's some similarities going on there. Singing-wise. <laughs> you know, I once had a moustache, too. Except never joined up properly. No, you didn't. I did. No. It was more teenager growth, really. It was only a couple of years ago, mind. So, no. The Sonny Bono, the, no, not really. And Cliff I Richard? Ski. Cliff Richard. No. I've never had... Cliff! Yeah. Oh, it's Jason, sorry. No. Never. Never. But just how easy is it to fake a lookalike? As part of an exclusive undercover investigation, I decided to find out. Step one, a disguise. We entered a second-hand store to find the right attire. We decided upon this taxi driver's jacket. It was 20 bucks. Next, we needed a camera. A disposable unit was easily obtained from a gas station. Then, off to an Auckland landmark, where we quickly found some innocent bystanders to help in our deception. This picture was then dispatched to the new idea, who had no idea that they were being duped, highlighting a shocking breach of security and begging the question, have they really caught Saddam? Although we did technically defraud New Idea out of $100, the money went back into the economy and is now helping to provide jobs for third generation New Zealanders. Man, let's film all our wacky antics and turn them into a TV show. Yeah! It's going to be wacky and crazy because we're wacky and crazy guys and we, 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 we want to stick it on a late night slot because it's so out there, man. What the f what the fuck's that, man? I don't know. 
Hmm. Nutty. Still to come, the celebrity share market, and we take you behind the scenes as the TV Guide Awards go all cockeyed. What now? Shortland Street. What a ten dream home. John Campbell gets dirty, and our cameras come under attack as the paparazzi comes unstuck. To the All Arab Index now, and Saddam is down in Grecian 2000 shocker. Osama retains most wanted baddie title. Zowie bounces back with own website. Joe Karam down as Bane appeal means more porridge. And Ridge rallies as New Idea reveals him to be Armenian. The TV Guide Awards may not have the cachet of the Oscars or the Nobel Prize. But because the magazine is one of the country's top sellers, the industry takes it and its readers seriously. The Maritime Museum in the Viaduct Basin is the gateway to the hub of the multicultural isthmus that is Auckland. And today, it's where the country's most desperate celebrities and bitter TV executives have gathered for the prestigious TV Guide Awards. It's a heady mixture of Shortland Street stars, paparazzi and booze. That's me getting to know award-winning actress Jodie Rimmer. It was shaping up to be the perfect afternoon, the sort of do where you end up making new friends and contacts and maybe even copping a feel on the balcony. But soon something would happen that would change the mood completely. A dark force was about to descend on the event. It would involve this woman, TV star Jane Kiley, and also involve tabloid photographer Richard Simpson. He had already made cryptic threats to our crew, but now he was about to blow his top in a stunning moment of madness caught on tape. First, he grabbed Kylie. Then he turned. <laughs> Our cameraman was knocked silly as the paparazzo lashed out. He struggled to regain vision, but was all blurry and disorientated like that time he sniffed Twink in the back of the bus. We couldn't believe what was happening. So we decided to confront the agitated photographer. Jesus Christ. What, what was that about? Okay. Need some, need to whack him. Did he whack him? I whacked his camera. Oh, whatever. So I don't give a shit. Take it easy. It's alright. Honestly, bro, I don't know what you're worried about. So I to lash out. No, that's well, violent. All well, I can say is... So you didn't get violent. You got violent. Have his camera. Bullshit. That's violent. That's your, that's your buddy. That's your conversation. That's the way you interpreted it. Got violent. Most onlookers were shocked. Dawson pointed at the camera. Hirschfeld was speechless. Rimmer bewildered. Our cameraman was scared for his life, but the worst was yet to come. Firstly, I would like to thank God for making all things possible. Moments later, Jay Lagai's agent began a gruelling acceptance speech that would last for a shocking amount of time. On the final Star Wars, and I'm well into many performances as Mufasa in The Lion King. Who's the sexiest reporter on TV? You are. No, are you a reporter? No, I'm not a reporter. What do I want for Christmas? Yeah. Um, boyfriend would be nice. Just kidding, I don't think. But you will, won't you? No. Does Tony Marsh report or does she just like say the wind? No, she's not she doesn't, she's not in this category. Do I like New Zealand Post? <laughs> I won't ask yeah. her. Well I do. Who's your favourite Maori on TV? <laughs> I like all of them. The best. Maori TV presenter. <laughs> Who's your favourite Maori on TV? Carol Hirschfeld. She's Nati Pro and she's a, she's a she's a beautiful Maori woman. Um She's, she's also part Australian and there's all sorts of things in there, really. She's a fine, you know, all her ethnicities are outstandingly represented. And to the Holy Spirit, Greg... Meanwhile, the, the Lagaya speech dragged on. ...damn drama we've seen in a long time. 
and for allowing me to be a P Polynesian lead in every true sense of the word. What's your favourite uh, edition of the um, TV Guide? <laughs> My favourite edition? My favourite. Edition of the TV Guide? Uh, well, the Home Truths one with Carol and I in the front, because we've been doing a show at 11 o'clock at night uh, called Home Truths. Um, it's been an interview show, which is 11 o'clock is quite late. Mm. You're putting me on the swap. Well, man. you know, there's heaps of them. There's thousands of them. Well, I can't think of any sexy news reporters. None of them particularly stand out, no. <laughs> I can't think of any. Like who? Charlotte Lenny? Oh, yeah, yeah, her glasses are kind of cool. She's yeah, sexy. No, she's sexy. Yeah, she's sexy. Yeah, I think that's the general consensus in TV3 as well. She's hot. It's about here that I begin to wonder what I'm doing with my life. Meanwhile, in the other room, the Ligaya speech is beginning to wind down. To my agent, oh God, that's me, but he's told me I have to read it. Of 13 years, Karen Kay, we've embarked on another exciting adventure together and having you and your staff with me will only make me stronger. May the force be with you. To my Polynesian brothers and sisters, be strong and fly the flag. I am proud to be a Kiwi actor and I thank you, the public and TV Guide for this great honor. Thank you. To recap, Rimmer won Best Actress, Jay Lagai won Longest Speech, John Campbell won the John Campbell Award, and TV3 News won Best News. But then the Desperados did encourage their viewers to vote on the news itself. Bailey was tearful with a sweet tribute to Richard Long. He's a wonderful broadcaster, a wise head, and a very special human being, and I'm going to miss him. Petra won the Most Rootable Woman Award, and the ZM Morning Pirates were actually very funny. And that's our show. Coming up next week, the most shocking moments of 2003. The tears, the tantrums, naked sexed up celebrities, swear words, boozy brawls, cannibalism, drugs, dogs, sport, and Satan. From all of us here at Eating Media Lunch, how are you fallen from heaven, O oh, Lucifer, son of the morning? At number 95. Older viewers will chuckle as they relive the magic of Stu Dennison, the late 70s kid show sensation. Today I've got a special mate of mine to say hello to and he should be at home, should be, yeah, should be at home recovering because he's just had his tonsils out in Honoré Hospital, you see, and his name is Stefan, Stefan Billings. How are you feeling, Stefan? All right? I like the name, Stefan. You can't talk properly at the moment. That's one, Grand. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.